Guess what we're doing more of today? That's right, we're gonna do some more Amy. Because Amy is cool, and it's coming on March 11th, so we gotta get ready. Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we're gonna be working where we left it off on the 2016 Amy 1. Problems 11 and 12 is gonna be very epic. Epic equals MA scores officially came out on Wednesday, so hopefully that was good for you. If not, oh well, what to do? But if you don't have your score, just ask for Proctor, he'll probably have it. Epic. I say epic too much, I'm sorry, okay? I'll do my best to not say epic. I said it again, epic. Bro, I'm so good at this game, it's not even funny. Alrighty, problem 11. Let P of X be a non-zero polynomial such that X minus one times P of X plus one is equal to X plus two times P of X for every real X. And P of two squared is equal to three. P of three. Then P of seven over two is equal to blah. Okay, so let's see, why don't we plug in one? Then we basically get that the left side is zero and then we get zero p of two is equal to three p of one. So basically p of one is equal to zero. Well if we do negative two, then we get negative three times p of negative two is equal to oh wait, yeah. Is equal to zero and then p of negative two is equal to zero. Okay. Why don't we plug in two for x? Then we get let me then we get p of two is equal, wait, what? No, p of 3 is equal to 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, p of 2. And then if we combine it with p of 2 squared is equal to p of 3, you get p of 2 squared is equal to 4, p of 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so that means p of 2 is either equal to 0 or, wait, yeah, so p of 2 is equal to 0 or p of 2 is equal to 4. And then 7 over 2, how do we get 7 over 2? That's like 3.5, what? Yeah, what does 7 over 2 have to do with anything? Oh, well, then we do 0, so then... If we do 0, the left side becomes 0, and then the right side becomes... So p of 0 is also equal to 0. Okay, did that help us? Huh, this doesn't seem to be helping at all. So, what can we do? Wait, that means p of negative 1 is also equal to 0. Wait, does that mean that all of them are equal to 0? What? Hold up. Well, all the integer values are going to be equal to 0 then, right? Well, yeah, literally all the integer values equal to zero. So how do you translate seven over two to an integer? So if you have a root for every integer, no, that's not possible. Yeah, then it has to be infinite degree, and that doesn't make any sense. Oh, this is negative one. P of negative one is equal to zero. Hold up, let us. Okay, so this first part is correct. So let's see. Let's write out what we figured out. So basically, P of one is equal to zero, and you get that by plugging in one then p of negative one is equal to zero. And then we plug in zero, then that gives you p of zero is equal to zero. And then if we plug in negative two, what happens? Well, negative two doesn't help at all because both sides are zero, so it works for anything. Negative three. Okay, so these three are the for sure zeros. What if we go to two? Or x is equal to one. Okay, so we can't go up either. Oh, oh yeah, so let's say x is equal to two and then you get yeah, so then we get p of 2 is equal to 0, or p of 2 is equal to 4. But if p of 2 is equal to 0, then everything above is just going to be 0 as well, and that's not possible, so clearly p of 2 has to equal 4. Which means that p of 3, on the other hand, is equal to 16. So if we try, okay, let's see, so p of x plus 1 is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 1 times p of x. So if we want to get p of Four, we had to apply three, so that would be five over two p of x, so it would be 40, so p of four is equal to 40. So you know that p of seven over two is between 16 and four. Do we know anything about negative two still? Negative three. Okay, so we basically have the three zeros. Okay, so we have x plus one times x minus one times x. So we have x cubed minus x times k is equal to p of x. So let's try plugging it in. So if we plug in 2 to this, if we plug in 2 to this, what do we get? We get 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. So if we put 2 thirds in that word, let's say k is equal to 2 thirds. Then we basically get, if we plug in this, we get 27 minus 3, which is 24 times, divided by 3 is 8 times 2 is 16. So we get this. And also, it's the, this satisfies the recurrence relation. If you plug it in, you basically get divided by x minus 1 times x plus 2, and you get p of x plus 1. Pretty cool. So p of x is basically this, so we just plug in 7 over 2 to this, and that gives us what? Um, so then we get 343 over 
8 minus 7 over 2 times 2 over 3. Okay, I can't do math, so we're going to do it manually. Very cool. So 28, 3, 13, 5, 1, 3, 1, 5 over 8 times 2 over 3. What's 5? 3, 15 over 3 is 103 times 2. No, divided by 4. What? Yeah, 103 over 4, so it should be 107. Okay. Epic. Do we troll or are we Gucci? Oh, we trolled. 105, god dang it. So 105 over 4? Yeah, 105 over 4. Okay. So that's going to be 109. Good thing we know how to check our answers. Okay. Problem 11, 109. Epic. Let's go. We're so good at this game. Let's go. All right. Now, number 12. All right. We're approaching the limit of my aiming skills, so let us see whether we can do it. Find the least positive integer such that m squared minus m plus 11 is a product. Oh, god of at least four not necessarily distinct primes. Okay, so let's just try some stuff. So m is equal to one gives you one minus one plus 11 is 11. M equals two gives you four minus two plus 11 is 13. M equals three gives you nine minus three gives you 17. Dang, why are all these primes? Is m right? Okay, that's not even factorable, so that's not a problem. M equals five. Gives you 25 minus 5, 20 plus 11, 31. Holy, all these are. Wait, did I just skip 4? Oops, m equals 4. Let's see. 16 minus 4, 12, 23. Bro, these are all prime fools. m equals 6. It's probably gonna have to be bigger than 11 in order to have some prime factors. So m6 is gonna give 36 minus 6 is 30, 41. Okay, let's think about this up more. Okay, so this is basically gonna be m times m minus 1 plus 11. So m is going to be a product of a couple primes, but it's not going to be divisible by 11. m minus 1 is not going to be 11, divisible by 11. So whatever this was divisible by is going to get demolished by this 11. Okay, let's say, so 11 is 2 mod 3, and this is guaranteed to be either 0 mod 3 or 2 mod 3, right? Could it be anything else? No, it can't. So it's either... 2 mod 3 or 0 mod 3, so this is never going to be divisible by 3. What about 5? Mod 5, this is 1 mod 5, and then this could be 3 times, so it could be 1 times 2, 2 times 3, or 3 times 4. So it could be 2, 1, or 3 times 4 is 12, or 2, or 0. So 0, 1, or 2, and we want it to be 4, negative 1, so that doesn't work, so it's never going to be divisible, so m, this is never going to be divisible by 5. 7 maybe? 7? Let's see. So this is 4 mod 7. This could either be 0. It could be 1 times 2. Because basically what I'm trying to do is like m could be something mod 7, right? And then m minus 1 is just 1 less. And then when you multiply them, you multiply the mods. So if m is 2 mod 7, then m minus 1 is going to be 1 mod 7. And then the product is just going to be two, 1 times 2 is equal to 2. And then if it's 3, then it's 3 times 2, which is 6. And then if it's... Without, we, we want 3 mod 7 eventually. So we could do 3 times 4 is 12, which is 5 mod 7. And then we go 4 times 5 is 20, which is, what, 6 mod 7? Or we could do 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 20. Wait, I just did that. 5 times 6 is equal to 30, which is 2. And then that's it. So... This is not going to work either. Okay, if we have 11, then we could factor out the 11, and then it's going to be 11 times k times... Wait, what? Yeah, 11 times... Wait, whoop. 11 times k times k... 11k minus 1 plus 1. Okay. So k that's any integer, this is going to be even. Oh yeah, this whole thing is going to be even, that's going to be odd. Okay, let's just plug in random stuff, wait. So if we plug in k equals 1, then this becomes 10 and this becomes 11. So then you have 11 times 11. And we know it's not going to be divisible by anything less than 11. So we basically want to make it as small as possible. Could we get it to be 11 to the 4? Is this possibly divisible by 11? It could be, it could be divisible by 11. So if we make this equal to something, to 11 cubed, that'd be epic. Let's see, 11k squared minus k plus 1 
is equal to 11 cubed. Is 11 cubed just like 1, 2, 3, 2, 1? I'm pretty sure it is. 121 and 121, 1, 3, oh, 1, 3, 3, 1, okay. So it will be 11 k squared minus k minus 1, 3, 3, 0 is equal to 0. So 1, 3, 3, 0 is 10 times 133, which is prime. 133 is prime, right? I'm not trolling. Oh, and I am trolling. It's divided by 7. 1, 6, 3, 9. So 19 times 7. So 2 times 5 times 7 times 19 times 11, and you want it to factor that. Okay. So what's the square root of this approximately? So 1, 3, 3, 0, 0 is approximately, it's going to be 100 about, it's square root is approximately 100, so we want to make two things that are approximately 100. It's going to be a little bit more than 100 though, so a little bit more than 100 works. Okay, 19 times 7 will give you, ends with 3, that's not working. So it can either be 5 and 6 or 5 and 4, yeah 5 and 6 might work, oh no 5 and, wait, shoot, yeah 5 and 4, is there an easy way to factor this? I don't I don't even know whether this works. So one of the factors has to end with a 5 or a 0, but if it ends with a 0, then it has to be these two together. Oh, so we could do... No. So it can't end in a 0, otherwise that won't work. 0, 9, 0, 1, no. So it has to end in 5 and a 6. So if we do 5 times 9... 5 times 7 times 11. 5 times 19. So that just doesn't work. Okay, this doesn't work. Uh. So basically we want m, so we basically want this to be divisible by 11. Can we try 11 times 11 times times 13 maybe? Would that work? 11k squared minus k plus 1, and then what's 11? 121 times 13. 36302121, and then 3751, so minus 1572 is equal to 0, okay. So 1572 divided by 8. Is it doing no, 4? 4 works. Okay. So 3, 3, 7, 9, 1, 2, 3. Oh, it's divided by 3, 2. So 2 squared times 3 times 131. Oh, that works. Yes, let's go. Okay, this works. So we, we know that the 11, time, 11 cubed doesn't work, but this should work. So now we could basically do 11 k squared minus 132k plus 131 minus 1572 equals 0. Let's factor this boy, 131k. Okay. <clears throat> then this becomes 11k times k minus 13, no 12, minus 12, plus 131 times k minus 12 is equal to 0. So basically k is equal to 12. And that means that m is equal to 132. Because we said that m is equal to 11k. And we saw that nothing smaller works, so it's just going to be 132. Holy epicness, we did it. I'm actually kind of surprised. I usually am not able to solve... Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I'm able to solve 12, sometimes I'm not able to solve 12. 13 through 15 is where I'm actually iffy, though. That depends on the contest. We'll, but we'll see. We'll see if we can do that. But anyway, that's enough for today. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.